Hi everyone, this is Elena of The Witch's Box, and I'm here today with another episode of Witch Booktube. And today we're going to be talking about four books. It's the Stephen Forrest Elemental series. If you watch my last book haul, which maybe we'll link at the end of this video, I held these books up because it was part of a huge book haul that I had. I don't even know what month it was, but if you look back, you're going to see it. There was so many books, and these were in that stack, with the exception of one that I actually ordered after the fact. But it is Stephen Forrest, The Book of Fire, The Life Givers, The Book of Earth, Making It Real, The Book of Air, The Art of Paying Attention. These are huge books, by the way. The Book of Water, Healing, Regeneration, and Recovery, all by Stephen Forrest. Actually, let me read you his bio, and then I'm going to read to you what I'm really loving about Stephen Forrest right now. Stephen Forrest is a professional astrologer and public speaker whose astrological bestsellers include The Inner Sky and Yesterday's Sky. His astrological apprenticeship program reaches students from around the world, and you can visit his website at www.forestastrology.com. So when I got these books, I actually didn't know exactly what they were about other than they were in some way, shape, or form around the elements. And we've covered the elements both here at Booktube as well as through our Witches book subscription. And also we are in the middle of going through each element because Llewellyn is doing an elemental magic book series and we had a box all around water magic and we also had a box so far all around air magic and then later this year and into I think next year we'll do fire and earth so elements are up and I'm doing a lot of reading we did a lot of reading uh, maybe a year and a half ago with Scott Cunningham's books so elements right I wanted to read these books I knew that they were chunky I knew that they came highly recommended but I didn't have a very clear idea about what the books were about. I had a vague recollection that Stephen Forrest is a renowned astrologer. So I got them. I read them. They are dense. There is a lot of information in these books, but I loved them. And I want to read to you because he is what is called an evolutionary astrologer. And I want to read to you what evolutionary astrology is before I go into the books. So evolutionary astrology is a name used to describe a style of astrology that understands each person's birth chart as a map of the soul's evolution. And you know I'm all about that. So the term evolutionary astrology is used by many astrologers and has a complicated history. And then it goes on and on and on about the history. I'm not going to go into it. It is on his website. I will link to it below. I love these books for many reasons. Number one, if you're interested in elemental magic, if you're interested in working with the elements in nature, in the world around you, there are so many different angles from which to approach this and to approach elements through astrology is a whole universe of like complex layer after layer after layer because you're working with those correspondences that we understand about fire and fire personalities and fire um, characteristics but through the lens of the planets and the dance of the signs and how all of that interplays with who you are as a person and how those things affect you. It is a gorgeous way of really rounding out your relationship with the elements if you are a witch who likes to work with elemental forces for your magic and for your connection and for your meditation, okay? I loved it for this. I also loved it because it spoke so much about different personalities, personality development, spiritual development, depending on what your natal chart is. It really breaks down signs and planet placements in a way that is much more holistic. I'm going to give you just a personal insight. I'm a Libra. I mean, I'm a Libra. I've got Libra all over my chart and I'm probably what you would call quintessential Libra in many ways. And one of the things that's always been very important to me, but I don't quite understand how to articulate other than the superficial explanation is that I need a home space to be specifically the way I need it to be. I need specific colors. I need it to be set in a certain way. There is something about that that a lot of people throughout my life have thought is a really superficial need. Like you don't really need a home to be a particular way. And I'm not talking about extravagance or a lot of money. I'm just talking about just my environment is so intrinsically important to me. And usually when we talk about Libras, we talk about, oh, they like pretty things and they like luxury and they're lazy and blah, blah, all these things. But he explains it in a way that I had such a profound aha moment because it, and I need to go back and read it because it was one of those things where it was like so deeply true and it so completely revolutionized how I saw myself that immediately my brain was like, I don't know that I can deal with that. And it kind of went off, right? Don't you know when you have those experiences, you're like, 
I got to go back to that because there was a lot there for me to really unpack. He said something along the lines of, because Libra is the sign of quote unquote balance and equilibrium and equanimity, that rather than it be a superficial desire for beauty, what it is is that we find equilibrium and a soothing of our stress and tension in the world and our discomfort with things in the world by having an environment that stimulates a particular way or stimulates our senses in a particular way. It's really about self-soothing. It's really about creating a groundedness or a peacefulness or a stillness within, whereas some other, for instance, I think he was talking about Gemini. Gemini doesn't feel quite settled in unless things are changing often, that that's a self-soothing thing. It feeds a soul need for a Gemini, whereas with Libra, it's really about creating a sense of peace and equilibrium that feeds a deeper anxiety. It's not about the superficial, oh, I love pretty things. And I thought, oh my God, that is exactly what it is. I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel grounded. I don't feel like I've landed until my space is a certain way. So there's a lot here. I loved, I loved, I love the breakdown. I would recommend if you're interested in astrology, if you're interested in the elements, if you're interested in you, because if you go and you get your natal chart, what I found here is that you can break down your natal chart through what he's talking about in each of these four books in a way that will give you so much profound insight and not only into who you might tend to be and the tendencies that you might have in your life and the things that might tend to happen repeatedly in your life, but it talks about it in terms of lessons and ways to move through. Oh my God, I loved it. I'm going to give you an example of just one of the table of contents. I'm not going to go through all of them. But to give you an idea of the things that he covers, there is some overlap in these books because of the way he talks about each planet in different signs. However, the overlap didn't feel repetitive in a way that wasn't useful, right? Because this is really dense information. There's a lot of information here, especially if you are not familiar with the intricacies of astrology. For me, reading the overlap over and over and over again didn't feel repetitive because it was like, oh, I want to commit this to memory. This is me learning something. And they were different enough so you're not like reading the thing verbatim, right? I'm going to give you the table of contents to this book. So they all follow this similar format, okay? I'm reading the table of contents for the fire book. There's an introduction. There is a chapter one that says flying over the territory, which is kind of giving you a lay of the land of what we're going to be covering in this book. Chapter two is Astrology's Holy Trinity. It explains signs, planets, and houses, so you have a running idea of what we're going to be talking about in the book. Then it goes into the three fire clans, and it speaks to each sign as a clan. The Aries clan, the Leo clan, the Sagittarius clan, and then chapter six is something called the handout. And there's information there for you to like study and work all this. Part two is mastering the alchemical marriage of sign, house, and planet. This is where having your natal chart is really handy. If you want to, yes, read everything so that you have a working idea of how astrology works and how intricate and beautiful it is. But also, if you really want to start diving into your own stuff, have your own natal chart handy. If you go to astro.com, it is a super outdated super outdated old school website that's really hard to navigate but if you navigate it and you kind of tinker around there's a place for you to create your own chart and then you can have it you can print it out and you can see it so that you can go through books like this and really kind of peg where you are and where each of your planets in each house really what it represents for you and all of that right you can do that on that website for free there are probably other websites that also do this but i have been part of astro.com i think for the last 20 years and it's, again, hard to navigate. It's super old. It needs to be updated. But there's a ton, a ton of information on astrology and all sorts of different things on that website. It is an amazing resource. All right, let me continue on with the table of contents. So this is part two. It talks about synthesis one, putting a planet in a sign and talking about that marriage and that connection. And then synthesis two, or one I, is putting a planet in a house and then what the meanings of that is this is specifically two with planets that are fire signs and he'll do this with each of the other elements as well part three goes into mars the sun and jupiter through the 12 signs and houses so it'll do each of the three planets for each element in each of the books right um so it'll go through each planet and all of the 12 signs and all of the 12 houses then part four is seeing possible futures the fire family and astrology crystal ball a fresh look at the astrological aspects, 
celestial navigation, Mars times and Aries times. Chapter 18 is Aries times, Mars time, the building blocks. So it goes into the themes that are up when these planets are doing different things in the sky. I really appreciated these books. They are just packed with so much information. And yes, the focus of these books is astrology specifically, but in his talking about an element through the lens of different signs, we get so much more dimensionality to elements in general because you've got three astrological signs per element. And each one of those three astrological signs is going to give you a different angle on how elements actually affect us, what element energetic streams are like in the world, not just related to astrology and us. So I really, I so appreciate these books. They're a great resource. If you have interest in astrology at all, I feel like these books are probably one of the more foundational ones. He has written extensively. I'll list a link to all his other books. He has written a lot about many things that I think are explained well enough for the lay person who isn't really well versed in the complexities of astrology. Enough also so that you learn about yourself and you learn about the way elements dance, the way astrology dances around our lives and influences us. I mean, wow, is all I'm going to say. They're big and chunky. So it's this one, again, huge. They also come in audiobook, although I will say that take it the way you can. I mean, really, who am I to say that don't, you know, don't listen to an audiobook, but there's so much information that if you really want to digest it, if you're like me, I needed to read through them, even though I started to listen to them because they're so big. I found that I really needed to actually see the words, do the note taking, kind of outline things because there's just a lot there to really digest and absorb. Love them, love them, Stephen Forrest, the Element series. I just can't recommend them enough. I gave all of these, I think I already showed you these. I gave all of these as five star because it was that helpful, that informative. I'm gonna say, even though they're a little dry, they're not really dry, they're a little dry, it was engaging, like I just couldn't stop. Even when I felt like, okay, I kind of read a little bit about this before, I was still engaged in a really fun way, like I really enjoyed it a lot. So. There you go. These four books. I'm going to try to hold them up without dropping them because, oh my gosh, they're so heavy. Stephen Forrest. I'll link to all of these down below. Thank you for hanging out. If you've read them before, let me know what you thought. If you are an astrologer or if you're interested or have been reading about evolutionary astrology, I would love to hear your comments down below as well because it's really, for me, it's a really interesting take on an already complicated topic, but one that I'm still always interested in, right? Because we're always interested in astrology. We want to know what the stars and the planets have to say about who we are and how we're going to be in a few years. And I would love to hear more from other people who are practicing astrology from this evolutionary astrology point of view, because it's find it to be so up my alley when it comes to psychology and the, our makings and archetypes and all of those things. I mean, it all just seems to go in really well. And yeah. It speaks, I think, to me, to that grand mystery where so many different disciplines ultimately weave together really beautifully, even though we don't talk about them as being really all part of a bigger whole, right? So all that, uh, let me know what you think down below. I will see you next week with more books, and I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye.